AI can't take over the world if you merge with it. Hello world, it's Siraj. And a week ago, Elon Musk's secretive brain chip company, Neuralink, conducted a two hour live stream where they detailed who they were, what they were working on, and what their goals were. I've literally been waiting years for this, and in this episode, I'm gonna explain my first impressions of the live stream, how their device works at both a hardware and software level, and most importantly, give you a glimpse of what the applications of it will be, both beneficial and exploitative. First of all, I love Elon. He's an inspiring guy who has pure intentions and invests in technologies to help humans thrive. He stated that the goal was to use their devices to understand and treat brain disorders, preserve and enhance your own brain, and create a well-aligned future. The cringe part of his speech was when he said that the ultimate goal was to achieve symbiosis with AI, which I totally understand, but that line was exactly what certain journalists needed to help spread fear around the technology. It's too ambiguous a statement for people who think of AI as some kind of digital entity that's partly conscious. It's not. AI is merely a collection of statistical techniques that have been around for decades that are now able to automate tasks that human intellect usually did, like language translation, recommendations, and driving. Thus, a brain chip that can increase the speed with which we interface with these statistical techniques faster will help extend our biological intellect, not all the components of our very being. But more on that later in this episode. We're gonna go really deep. That being said, I loved the team he's built. Every single person was really impressive. And shout out to Dr. Matt McDougall. That guy in particular was so zen, humble, and really good at explaining neuroscientific domain knowledge to the general public. Their devices will need to be FDA approved to be used for medicine, and in just two years, they've already made absolutely remarkable progress by testing it on non-human specimen like rats and monkeys. Hopefully they didn't use it on one named Caesar. They plan on having the first human use it in 2020, and based on how long the FDA approval process usually takes for approving medical devices, on the average of three to seven years, we can expect a consumer device sometime between now and 2025, although it is Elon, so I think 2022 is more likely just three years from now. Before we dive into their hardware, it's important to note the decades of advances in neural interface technology they've built on top of. In 2005, a patient with spinal cord paralysis received a brain implant that enabled him to control a computer cursor with his mind. In four days, he was able to master the ability to play Pong using the device. Since then, other paralyzed people with brain implants have moved robotic arms, communicated person to person, and improved their eyesight, all with their mind. The innovation that Neuralink presented was the sheer amount of electrodes they were able to fit into their final product, the N1 chip. In two years, they created seven different versions of the chip, meaning they moved insanely fast, designing the hardware, a new chip every three months. The last iteration is eight millimeters in diameter and contains 1,024 electrodes, which is a thousand times more than the current state of the art. Each electrode is able to read and stimulate electrical spikes of neuronal activity in the brain. And your brain has over 300 million of these neurons communicating with each other to help you feel the physical world by operating your sense organs, controlling your mood, creating danker than dank memes, memories, everything that you think of as you is a result of the interactions of these neurons. Each patient will have four of these N1 sensors and they are connected by threads much smaller than a human hair to your brain. They use a massive robotic device that can precisely drill a very small hole through your skull to place this device and threads in, in a way no human could due to our inability to operate at a level that small, avoiding critical blood vessels along the way. The chip contains analog pixels five times smaller than the state of the art, which amplify and filter neural signals before they're converted into digital bits. One analog pixel can capture neural signals of 20,000 
samples per second with 10 bits of resolution, resulting in 200 megabits per second of neural data for each of these channels recorded. The N1 will be connected via small wires under the scalp to an inductive coil behind the ear. This will pair wirelessly through the skin to a battery-powered Bluetooth device called the Link, which just so happens to be named the same as my own BCI blueprint of a device that also goes behind the ear. Awesome, hope they were inspired by it. The chip will transmit its data wirelessly and be powered wirelessly. The chip itself has several onboard firmware components that each serve a different purpose like stimulating neurons, recording diagnostic data from electrodes, managing power, converting the analog signals it records to digital signals that can be sent to the non-invasive link device, and processing logic to ensure a clear signal is derived from all the noise in the brain. In terms of software, they've shown an iPhone app that would both send and receive data from the device. Because of the way the brain is structured, learning how to move a mouse, control your phone, or type with your mind will be like learning how to ride a bicycle or move a new kind of limb in the body. Our brain will adapt to it, integrate it into its mode of being, and we don't even fully know the potential of what we're capable of when we have this new capability. Before we talk about the applications of this technology, I'd like to present my frame of where this fits into human history. We all have a set of basic needs that have to be met in order for us to thrive. Excellent mental health, physical health, meaning slash purpose, and relationships. There's a 10,000 year old technology called yoga that I've been learning about recently that was invented to help achieve these three things. I'll admit I've listened to the Bhagavad Gita audiobook on Audible narrated by Paul Beasley about 50 times in the past few weeks to really ingrain its concepts into my subconscious. Yoga is a set of disciplines of the mind, body, and speech that enable a practitioner to achieve a higher state of human consciousness, of complete bliss and relaxation. Through meditation, becoming detached from the results of your actions, but acting selflessly, avoiding lust, anger, and greed, the practitioner is able to achieve this state. Advanced yogis are able to cry tears of ecstasy at will, for example, no need for any drugs. A newer technology to achieve these aspects of human life is money, since money enables you to purchase medical care, a therapist, and time to focus on human relationships and meaningful work. And an even newer technology to enable this is artificial intelligence. AI can be used to derive insights from your mental health data, your sleep data, your diet and exercise data to help you make smarter decisions about how to be healthier. It can recommend relationships for you via social networks and connect you with people who are beneficial for you and be used as a tool for you to provide selfless service to others by bringing you knowledge from search results and helping automate a task that will empower other people. Now, Neuralink will be the next technology to enable this, and the Dalai Lama agrees. He has already stated that if it was possible to become free of negative emotions by a riskless implantation of an electrode without impairing intelligence and the critical mind, he would be the first patient. Now, let's talk about the beneficial applications of this technology. If Neuralink is already able to perform read and write operations to the motor cortex to help control an external device like a phone, and they have plans to do the same for the visual cortex, somatosensory cortex, and other parts of the brain, that means we're going to be able to write software to read and manipulate mood, pain, hunger, thirst, memory, vision, and mathematical reasoning. In terms of mental health, we can create an app for peacefulness, helping people achieve zero anxiety or depression without having to dedicate years of practice towards meditation. We can remove all forms of mental disease and enable them to recover from any emotional trauma easily. In terms of physical health, we can modulate dopamine-based cravings so that instead of craving food that's bad for you, you can select which foods your body craves according to whichever diet plan you'd like to follow and the same for forms of exercise. You can make yourself enjoy any type of exercise that you'd like to excel at, be it cycling, swimming, or table tennis. 
In the long term, you can even download these skills from the internet directly. 10,000 hours of training in a split second. In terms of wealth acquisition, you could download any skill you'd like. Entire textbooks, PhDs, thousands of scientific papers on any topic. You could become an expert in anything instantly. And using that knowledge, you can build a business to help other people. A large part of being able to be successful at any task involves the ability to have sustained focus, attention, motivation, and enthusiasm towards a goal. Many self-help and productivity books are written about this. You can get into this flow state instantly to achieve your ambitions. In terms of sheer happiness, the ability to stimulate the visual cortex allows for new forms of gaming and entertainment. Control any kind of 3D avatar or Gundam wing with your mind. Full immersion virtual reality. Hear, see, touch, and even taste a designed reality from the depths of the ocean to the most wondrous fantasy land. Be inside of a movie, the main character. Experience stories like never before. And lastly, in terms of meaning or purpose in life, imagine downloading altered states of consciousness like a DMT experience automatically to achieve some insight or revelation as to what you should do next in life without any side effects or an AI that's able to tell you what would be the most meaningful for you, what would bring you the most fulfillment after analyzing your neural data. And alluding to what the team was saying during the live stream, this will enable a new form of communication that doesn't rely on words, but instead on concepts. Imagine all the different dimensions of communication, the unknown unknowns that we can experience with other humans when we learn how to use this. As for the negative implications, mind control by exploitative governments and corporations is definitely a possibility here. Although it's heartening to see that the Neuralink team said that ad-based businesses would not be allowed on any kind of app store of theirs, and that safety is their number one priority. We'll need layers and layers of encryption to prevent digital viruses from manipulating our mind into states of torture and suffering, like in my favorite show, Black Mirror. Any apps will need to be vetted by multiple parties, not just a single team, and it'll have to go through a review process unlike anything we've ever seen before in software. I'd also like to say that Neuralink is not the only one working on this. Kernel is also building something in this regard. They'll have something to show as well within a few months, so stay tuned for that. Watch my interview with their CEO, Brian Johnson, to learn more about it. There are three things to remember from this video. Neuralink recently demoed a chip that offers state-of-the-art performance in reading neural data that will eventually need to be surgically implanted into the brain via a LASIK slash acupuncture-like process. We can use it to have better health, meaning, and relationships. And in order to avoid negative uses, we'll need to redefine the software review process so that it's much stronger than what we have today. I hope you're as excited about the future as I am, Wizards. It's coming fast.